has changed the way I think of science. Inside Out has changed my outlook on science class. It's a lot more fun. Inside Out makes me want to be a scientist. Uh, we got into this outreach program basically trying to find opportunities for students. We, were able, we had a meeting and the folks from Mayo, the wonderful folks from Mayo Clinic, were trying to find ways to outreach to schools and, uh, and students and kids. And so we said let's try this as a partnership. And it was an amazing collaboration, a true model of what could happen across uh, cities, states, uh, as a nation. I'm Steve Ecker. I am a professor in biochemistry and molecular biology, and my laboratory is focused on uh, cancer biology, understanding uh, the biology of underlying cancer, as well as uh, trying to prevent cancer by preventing uh, tobacco use. As we at Mayo Clinic tried to discuss where the best uh, the best focus for our efforts in outreach would be, even before Inside Out started. Uh, of course, everybody comes immediately to, oh, go to high school, go to high school because they're the next ones in college, or go over to UMR and, you know, work with those, those uh, freshmen and sophomores in college. And I believe all of us that are in Inside Out belong there, believe very strongly that our efforts belong not on that end of the spectrum, but on the other end of the spectrum. I wanted to talk about something that we did this year, which we would do about flying shrimp and we actually did a whole big experiment we um, we put water and salt in it and we needed to figure out what like salt water and um, my science project is on condition place pregnancy basically I want to find out if uh, playing music while the fish are being fed can train them so that when music is played they come to be fed I'm working with planaria and I chose to work with Planaria and Regeneration because I thought then if I could find something that was actually beneficial, it could make a difference. I'm working with an engineer in creating a, uh, these three different apparatuses uh, for exercising uh, larval zebrafish, adult zebrafish, and making, a, making an aerator for a petri dish for larval zebrafish. Our fish habitat system has been a phenomenal way for our students to extend their learning and their activities. And the way we did this, we looked at the funding and like everything else with this project, we had to break down the barriers through collaboration and partnership. And we used our partner, our parents as partners for this one, and they did a wonderful job of helping fund this uh, wonderful tool, educational tool. Feeding the fish, we can either feed them flake food or brine shrimp, but like flake food you can get from a regular pet store, but we think they prefer brine shrimp because it's more from their natural environment. And we feed them three times a day, once at 9, 12, and 3 o'clock. Well, about four times a week is when we set up our mating tanks. We document uh, which group that we're pairing, and we have to document the temperature of the water in, in degrees Celsius, and then we have to find the pH of each mating tank. And at the next morning, when we, um, we document how many embryos were produced and then how many were alive out of the ones produced, and then we check again after a seven-day count. The most rewarding aspect of this entire collaboration and partnership is when you can walk up to a student, you can walk up to any student, and you can say, who is a scientist, what does a scientist look like, and they say, it looks like me, because they've internalized what it is to be a scientist, and they have it. And that is the best part of this whole project. In the fish lab, James? He does a lot. This is basically like his man cave. He does everything with the fish. He filters it. He gets. He buys with his own money all this stuff for them. And he's a very good teacher to help out the zebra fish. He's really good. He knows all the technology. Any problems, James is the person to ask for it. Students have been designing their own experiments currently with um, using zebra fish or zebra fish embryos with an interest that they had that was sparked from an uh, experiment that the whole class did in groups where they were testing to see if ethanol um, affects development, comparing that to fetal alcohol syndrome in humans. This year we've been doing a lot of things with zebrafish. We've been doing plenty of experiments on them. We've done one with caffeine and right, the one I'm doing right now with my science, science group, we're doing right now with n and naproxen to see how they develop the kidneys.
The science fair is just one other way that we can measure student engagement. We've gone from five students to nearly 80 students participating on a voluntary basis for the regional science fair. on three types of worms um, in Liz's class. We were working on red regular worms, planaria, and earthworms. And the planaria, um, we cut some, and when we cut them, they regenerated. When we worked with earthworms, we, you, we had to design our own experiment. So when we designed our own experiment, my question was, does a worm follow the li a line if it is placed on the line and has a smell or taste in its mouth? My question was, what is a worm's favorite color? Well, one time they were in their a little tame thingy, and we would we were looking at them and using tools and talking about the tools. Our goal is to inspire students to get into science and we're seeing that that is definitely working as students want more to take their science to the next level. As we can see with our students registering for high school honors biology with 86 percent of our students saying they need more science. Everything we've been about thus far at Inside Out is breaking norms, breaking what, what people think about science and scientists. And uh, an opportunity has come up now to bring a group of our, uh, some of our team to Washington, D.C. When our principal told us that um, we had an opportunity to go to Washington, D.C., I was really excited and I wanted to go. And we look and say, who is our team? Our team includes students, teachers, administrators, community members, parents, paraprofessionals, and scientists. Why not bring them all to a scientific meeting? He had us write like an essay about why should we should go, what science means to us, how science has changed at Lincoln. This meeting that we're going to at the uh, American Association for the Advancement of Science is actually allowing us to break that norm and have these students and this team present at the highest tier of science. My role in Inside Out is to work with teachers and kids about dialogue which is a very specialized, as we see it, we call it difficult dialogue. It's, it is a communication process. Science standards that have come out that are actually really quite challenging. And to find novel ways of trying to bring these standards alive to students in the classroom. So we've built curriculum together, hand in hand, finding different activities that we can, that we can bring in, finding different conversations that we can lead and have with with kids. Ways in which we can have scientists live and in person in classrooms or via Skype and, and video conferencing be a part of their everyday science experience. Furthermore, we've brought in people from Winona State. Uh, we're bringing in uh, pre-service educators to be mentored by the Lincoln teachers and to become better teachers to be mentored by scientists, to become better scientists. It is. It is an absolute honor to be a part of it. I think any time we can bring um, the community and industry and business partners together with schools and teachers and students um, so that education becomes, uh, it's, it's a benefit to all the players. And I think this is just an excellent example of the energy and synergy that develops when people gather around a common cause. Um, and it, it serves to benefit everybody. I think this program has been a wonderful model and hopefully a model that can be replicated across many, many areas and many businesses and, and many areas of science. This is a growing and living thing. I invite parents to become part of it. I invite all of the teachers at Lincoln and throughout Rochester to be part of it and community members to be part of this. Because when, when the money goes away but the standards are lifted, how do we fix it? We need to work together to provide novel ideas and concepts for teaching and the teaching of science or the teaching of business or the teaching of chemistry or mathematics. And partnership does that. It's a low-cost alternative for an extremely powerful outcome.